Okay, so we are sitting here in Virginia Beach, Virginia at the Brennan Farms Apartments with my mother and it is Mar April 6th, 2019. And is that it's right? drizzling out. And it's drizzling <laughs> out. That's what my that's what my Dick Tracy watch says, right? Okay. So, what is your full name and why were you named that and did you have a nickname when you were growing okay. up? Okay. My my full name when I was born was Peggy Price Johnston. Peggy after my mother's sister Peggy Barrett or Margaret Barrett. The Price we didn't realize at the time was after my uh, a grandmother or a great grandmother. Her last name was Price. Okay. And then the Johnston was my father's name. Um, now when we moved years, years, years later to Virginia Beach, there was a mix up in, with driver's license and stuff. So um, I got to have to go back to Margaret, even though that was not on my birth certificate. It's not on your birth certificate. Right. So it's Peggy. And g growing up, um, my brother called me Baba because he couldn't say Peggy. And then later on, we lived next door to a family in Rumson. The, the girl's name was Peggy Johnson. The mother's oh. name was Mary Johnson. And Ike was the father. So um, they used to call me PPJ because ah, Peggy Price Peggy Johnson. Price Johnson. So that's, ah, that's the answer. Cool. Yeah. Cool. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't well, remember you do. telling me about that. <laughs> okay. Can, can you tell me the your parents' full names, what their birth dates were, and, and where they were born? Yeah, they both were born in New York City. Um, my father's name is Hamilton Wilson Johnston Jr. Um, he was born, oh, excuse me, he was born in Jersey City, New Jersey, um, on March 10th, 1907. Okay. Um, because at the time his father was working as a detective for the city of Jer Jersey City. So that's how they got to be there. My mother was born in the Bronx, Bronx County in New York. Her name was Mary Josephine Barrett and she was born on May 2nd, 1903. So she's a, almost four years older than my father and my father always used to say, she taught me when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> Which so. was a little exaggeration. Yes. <laughs> and they died. My father and my mother both died in Rock Hill, South Carolina in the, in the early 90s um, because they had been living with us. So. Do you have uh, memories of their parents and oh, yeah, names uh, yeah. or okay. birthdates? My, my on my father's side, I distinctly remember and spent lots of times with um, Hamilton Wilson Johnston Sr. and his wife, Lily Bell Woodland Johnston. And they lived, um, they lived next to us when we lived in Highlands and then they got, moved to a bungalow in water, which, which was part of Highlands and I would stay overnight with them. My grandmother taught me how to swim and my grandfather loved to sit in the chair and play solitaire. And uh, so, so, you know, but they had a varied life because he was told when he was in his 20s that he was going to die of consumption. Oh, wow. And that if they didn't move out of the New York area, that he would be dead soon. So they, they moved with the Elston Johnstons to Plainfield, New Jersey. They had a farm. They sold farm uh, produce. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he died in his 80s. So. <laughs> well, maybe the move to Jersey did it. Yeah. Who knows? And what about and grandma's? My, uh, on my mother's side, her mother died in, she had what was known as a fallopian pregnancy. Mm -hmm. She had had four children and she got pregnant again. And she had a fallopian pregnancy and she would not let them, she felt that it was, would have been an abortion and she wouldn't let them take it out and she died. Mm -hmm. left a husband and four kids. Mm -hmm. He was a New York City policeman. Um, he had been, bo they had both been born in Ireland. So, and he had, I think, a roving eye. But anyway, he and his brothers and uncles, they all took care of the, of, of the, 
the four of my mother and her her two brothers and her sister mm -hmm. Peg. So, um, so is, do you think is that why Grandma got married later in life? You think and had kids that later could have in life? been that they weren't that different in age. Ch Uncle Charlie was the youngest, and my father remembers taking him. Um, as an adult, they they got him a job at the Plaza Hotel where my grandfather, Johnston, was the house detective. Oh. And you could see the plaza in a lot, a lot of those um, Central Park pictures. Mm -hmm. um, so my uncle Charlie had to dress up in a suit and tie, but it was my father, who by that time had married my mother, um, who would drive him to work into, this, oh. into the main part of the city. So, you know, so they, they were... And they all knew each other from down at the shore, down at Waterwich, mm -hmm. even though they didn't marry until later. Until later. Until later. Okay. So. Okay. So, um, let me make sure everything's actually yeah, running here before we get too far. Yes, we're good. Okay. It's going just fine. All right. So, what were your parents' occupations? Okay. Well, my mother was a school teacher always. She went to what was called a two-year, after high school, two years a normal school. And at 19, she was out teaching in the New York City school system. And, and later on, when they moved to New Jersey, she taught. She taught until she was 65, mm -hmm. uh, mostly the lower grades, fourth, second. She, lo she loved it. Um, and my father, um, he used to talk about, when he was younger, uh, well, he, he almost got drafted, but they said, well, what do you want to what do you want to branch? And he said the Navy, because he liked boats. But they found out he was colorblind, so they, so they wouldn't <laughs> take him. Well, thank goodness, you know. So he worked in Wall Street as a runner uh, for a number of years. And, and then, I'm, I'm not sure, he, he worked most of the time when I was little and they lived in New York. He worked at Todd Shipyard, which was across the river in New Jersey. And he was a ship's carpenter, and he talks about um, after the war, they sold certain ships to the Russians, and what my father's job and his crew, the crew, would <clears throat> cut those ships in half and get them small enough to get them on another ship where they shipped them off oh, to wow. Russia, and then they would put them back to, you know, over there, they put them back together. And reattach them. Know. But yes, yeah, so he would, he would leave, um, the Bronx, the woodlawn where we live, my mother would give him one of those black uh, the lunch pails with the thermos mm -hmm. dome top, yes. and off he'd go. I don't know how he, he, he would have gone downtown at, to New York and then gotten the ferry across the ferry to work. Wow. I don't know. Wow. Well, you know, that part they didn't worry about. And then he, he, their father, my uncle Jack had lost his leg in, in college after a fire. So he had trouble getting work. So my grandfather, I believe, bought this hardware store on um, in Woodlawn uh, or in Fordham, New York. Mm -hmm. And so my father and his brother, Uncle Jack, John Price Johnston, uh, ran the store. Mm -hmm. And and then after that, they all moved in the late '40s to New Jersey, the Highlands. They bought a building there, and then again you know, opened it as a hardware store there to just to get out of New York. Mm -hmm. so. okay. Is there anything in particular that stands out in all the memories you have of your mom? Is there anything that well, stands out she about was, her? Well, she was four feet 11, <laughs> <laughs> and she was the oldest of kids who had been basically orphaned because the father didn't last maybe three or years after the mother after died. After the mother died, wow. And um, so she was a fierce, she was like a lioness, protecting those kids. And then, of course, when my brother and I were born, she protected us, too, you know, mm -hmm. and just... I don't think she ever did anything illegal, but she, she I mean, yeah. you know, we were her, <laughs> her priority. So, um, you know, she, and she was always moving quickly. Was and, she strict? Yo, oh, yes. And yes, and she used to, <laughs> she, she, when we lived above the store in Highlands, 
um, that you could go from the kitchen around through the hallway, past the bedrooms, into the dining room and back in the kitchen. And behind the refrigerator, she would, the electric cord for the iron would hang, it was detachable from the mm -hmm. iron. So she would hang the cord there, and if I did something wrong, she'd grab that cord, she would hit me. So she chased me around, <laughs> but she never did, I don't ever remember her con connecting with me. <laughs> But that's you know that's that's my memory of that. But she but yes that's they funny. were they were strict. She was more strict than my father. You know he was a, a softy. So. so do you so if she was teaching during the school day, uh -huh. I, and I guess that okay. worked out because you were what about well, when you were not in before you started school? Well, when um, when we lived up in in. Woodlawn, we didn't live too far from my mother's sister Peg, mm -hmm. and her name was Coster by that time, and my cousin Irene was her daughter, and that she was, a, and Peg was a teacher too. So I remember um, going to up to her house, and they had a German maid that I'm sure my mother and Peg paid, and a banana, one in a bunch, and she watched Irene and me. Okay. When we didn't go to school. Now, when we started at St. Barnabas School, you walked to school. Um, I don't remember what we did for lunch, but we wa I walked, and Irene would have come from another direction. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, but you walked to school. And, and, and so you were at a, going to a different school than where your mom was teaching? Oh, yes. My mother always taught in the public school. She never taught in the Catholic schools. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know. And then when we moved down to Highlands, she would be teaching, but we lived above the store. So my father and my uncle were always down there. We were always right down there. Right yeah. down there. So, yeah. you know, there was always somebody watching us. Yeah. So my brother was five years younger than I, Jack Johnston. So, is, he, yeah. um, is he named after Grandpa? What's his, um, what's his He's name? named... John Hamilton Johnston. Okay. So, and I, I never really talked to him about it, but he, I would assume he's named after um, his father Hamilton, and the, and, and then and the, bro the brother. The brother maybe. But the, there was a further okay. ancestor that was named John Johnston. So, who started out the whole thing from Ireland? <laughs> um, were you born in a hospital? And where okay, now, where were you born? I, they were li they lived in New York City, and my mother, um, I'm trying to think, she was about 36 years old when I got she got pregnant with me, and that was that was pretty advanced in age. So she would have gone. She went to like a special New York City person doctor, mm -hmm. and then I was born in something called Fitch's Sanitarium. But it, what it meant was it wasn't one of those great big hospitals. It was probably like a, a small, a small, you know, yeah. community kind um, of. Although that would have been, I would have been, that would have been <coughs> 1939. Um, and if you've seen this call the midwife stuff in the 60s, they were still having kids at home. I was not born at home, and either was my brother five years later. No, we were born in a medical facility. Okay. Um, so yeah. So tell me about the first home. The, the first house you remember living in. Okay, well, the, the first one, but I don't remember, it was a, a street behind my the, the store on near Fordham Road. It was on Marion Avenue. It was an apartment. They lived mm -hmm. in an apartment. And the one I vaguely remember was at 235th Street um, in Woodlawn. It was just above Woodlawn Cemetery, mm -hmm. which if you Google it, it's full of famous people, but they're also our family too. Um, so we lived there in an apartment, and my father tells the story that um, or my mother would come home from work, and the neighbors would say, your daughter's running around in the backyard without her clothes on. <laughs> <Again>. <laughs> so I don't know who the heck was watching me, but... <laughs> and one time, one time my, my mother and I had gone to the shore, back to, down to Waterwich, and my father came home from work tired, and he fell asleep, and he didn't know that they were going to be fumigating the, the building 
that day. He evidently missed the notice or what, and he woke up and there were cockroaches. Oh. All that. He just, you know, oh. I'm just giving me chills, but yeah, cockroaches oh, yeah. everywhere in the apartment. That was 235th Street. And then they bought a house in Woodlawn on Vireo Avenue. Now, I'm not going to tell you the number because that number I use for my personal identification okay. number very, very often. But that, um, that was a two, it was two, it was a three story house. They rented the outs, the downstairs. And then we lived on the second floor and the third floor, I think was where my bedroom and mm -hmm. had eaves. And a lot did you have separate entrances for the um, folks who were renting you, or did you all kind of? The door opened in, maybe into a hallway and then we may have gone upstairs. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, and I can't remember the name, their name, but they were very nice, an older couple and a daughter who was worked at NBC. Oh. So they let me come in and they would give me a, they had a, a circular breakfast bar and they put a little real coffee in it and then cream in a little juice thing. Oh, yeah. And that was my treat. How old would you have been and then? I would have been, well, we moved out of there when I was seven. So okay. at any time, maybe from four years old to seven years mm -hmm. old. And she would, look, Rosalie was the daughter's name. She, I thought she was beautiful. And she would, she put her makeup on in the bathroom. She'd let me come in and watch. I put all <laughs> of this, you know, pancake makeup. Because mm -hmm. she was going into the city. So, yeah. um, and my mother was friends with her years later, you know. I can't, How long, like, give me an idea of what, you say she was going into the city and I look at it as. As one big place. You were in the city. Well, living. You were, so you were, what was the were, kind of a commute that she would have to She have would done? have had to get on a, um, probably the train, which was right below the hill. We could look down from our backyard onto the, the mm -hmm. New York Central, or she would have, well, I wouldn't know how she would have gotten to the, the end of the subway line. Subway or train. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think she would have driven in. In those days, yeah. people didn't have cars, but uh, yeah. And and as I said, we walked. I walked to school, and I don't remember Jack. I think we may have moved out of there by the time Jack was human. So <laughs> by the time he was human, yeah. <laughs> What's that mean, Ma? Well, I mean, he, <laughs> well, he could talk back to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, we we oh so, well, I want so to point out to you. About, so was I, the when did you leave? That city and go to yeah, New Jersey. That, that was when we bought the store in Highlands, New Jersey. It had been a pharmacy. And my father and Uncle Jack turned it into a hardware store. And my father, for the most part, built all of the cabinetry and the display cases. And it, it involved also garages and two apartments <coughs> um, above. One my, my grandmother and grandfather lived in and Uncle Jack until he got married. And then my mother and father and Jack and I lived in the other. And I want to point out that, that the apartment we lived in, it had a kitchen, a dining area, um, a little living room, two bedrooms, and mm -hmm. one bathroom. Oh, so, wow. So my brother and I shared a bedroom mm -hmm. until we moved out of there in 19... I was a teenager. I would, well, I was like in seventh summer mm -hmm. uh, after our seventh grade mm -hmm. and the bedroom had um peter rabbit wallpaper huh and i got the bed near the window and i'd forget to take my gum out at night and i'd forget to and i'd afraid i was going to swallow it so i'd pull it out and i'd peel the wallpaper back and stick the gum <laughs> in <laughs> and so then press it back so i don't know and i do remember we had a dresser and we had a little fish tank um, didn't, there, w there wasn't mm -hmm. much room to walk around the bed, mm -hmm. and uh, and there was a porch out the back um, that had the there was a bed because that's where Sissy or I, well Irene didn't stay too often but Sissy would spend a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. and all kinds um, of games. Sissy, how is Sissy oh, related? Sissy to you? is, who is she? my mother's brother, Edmund, had five kids, four boys and one and girl, her. and Mary Elizabeth was the girl. And, and I think partly because she was the only girl, my mother would take her down for a couple of weeks to get her out of the, you know. Okay, that makes so, sense. So yes, and we're still So in you went from living above that store, store. to the, the house, house that they built? Yes, that they Now, 
you said that grandpa's parents lived next to you in the apartment in, the next to you in Highlands. Yes. What happened with okay. them? And well, um, now, uh, Uncle Jack married, um, and I think at that point my grandparents, they had had a bungalow up the tracks, the railroad tracks, to, in an area called Waterwich. So I think my grandparents moved up there, but my uncle and, and his wife stayed in the, in the, the smaller apartment. Mm -hmm. And you know, I honestly don't remember what happened after we left the, the, the apartment above the main part of the store. Well, they, they would have rented it out. You would assume. Yeah. yeah. They wouldn't have just left that in. Yeah. Yeah. I think. So tell me about that. That they built a house. Well, my mother was always looking for property, and she she had she bought several pieces over the years. It seemed like we moved every five years. Um, and they, they used to have one piece of property that looked out over the water, uh, and you could see New York City from it, but. It must not have been conducive, or they couldn't afford to build the house. So they bought a lot in Rumson, the West End. It was called near. We were, by that time we were going to Saint Anne, Saint Holy Cross Catholic School. Took a bus uh, when we lived uh, above the store at the Nickel. Took a bus three miles down the ocean front and walked across a bridge to the school. Once that we found the lot in Rumson, I could walk to school also. And it was a narrow lot on the waterfront. Um, it was like 50 feet wide, but um, maybe 200 feet long. Mm -hmm. So the, the how they hired an architect. They must have known the guy. His name was Amodio. And he designed, it was a ranch house, but they had to turn it. Is that my phone? That's your phone. Yeah. Let's, we'll take a break. Okay. Uh, we have all right, so we're going to start back. You had, you had been talking about the house they Rumson. had designed yes. that they were going to build. And it, when you drove in, it was uh, you pulled into a two-car garage, and then there was a breezeway, and then there was the house, and then there was a, a pier, um, and the water. It was the Sh Shrewsbury River, and my father had, you know, both. What street was it It was on? 95 Waterman Avenue. And there were occasions when the tide would be coming in and so high that if I was at school or something, my mother or father would have to come out in the rowboat and pick me up. Oh, wow. And, and ferry me back a couple of blocks. Mm -hmm. The water would flood. But since then, I think they've changed that. But the, they play, paid to have the exterior house built and, you know, the grading. And, and to my best of my knowledge, my father did the whole interior, the wiring and the and all of the sheetrock and the, um, um, and they were just talking about we had hot water baseboard heating um, throughout, and he did the floors. I can so see those did finishing he do the plumbing? nails, and I'm not sure about the plumbing. I, I don't Maybe remember. That. But again, the, there was a, a kitchen, a living room with a dining area with a picture window that looked out over the water, three bedrooms. We were up to three bedrooms, but still one full bath, and in the kitchen, there would there were these sliding doors uh, that was supposed to be a pantry. They put a toilet in there too, mm -hmm. which was a lifesaver with the four of us. But I tell you why how small these are, so that you can appreciate what we what, we, what we've what, come to expect. This yes, being is normal. A normal yeah, size it, is yes, huge. Yes, and we would. Oh, and that's <clears throat> your. If you're going to talk about pets, I'll tell you the story about the pets. Then. <laughs> all right. All right. So, did you, was that the last place you lived with That's, them before you went off to school or nope, anything like that? So, nope, that after I that, was there from eighth grade until sometime in high school. It wasn't very long, but my mother got tired. They had to worry about the water coming in at the house. It never came in to the, to the floor. It never came high enough to get into the, because they had built it up mm -hmm. already. But then this, in Highlands, the store would fl would get flooded. And and I remember walking in the, you didn't know any better. You walked in the sewage and stuff, you mm -hmm. know, and went out to play. It was fun when the tide came in. So um, she said, I'm tired of worrying about both places. So we moved again. And we they found a house um, in Middletown, was um, can't remember, Ridgeview and Mountainside Avenue, and it had already been built. 
but it was new to them. It was new. It was a new construction. Mm -hmm. And so we moved there, and I think by that time I'd already met Daddy, my my husband, um, and so he helped move. He helped move oh. us, I think. And at that point too, my brother was driving a good humor truck. <laughs> So, I can see that now they used to wear uniforms. Yes, wore white, uniform? white uniforms, and we have a picture of him, you know, coming by the house. Uh, but that's that's where I was married from. So I didn't physically live there for very long because I was always away so you at, were college. at college. Um, so yeah, so so you guys, um, what religion were you growing up? Um, they they were Catholic. They were all Catholic until my mother met my father. Now my father was. As a young man, apparently they went to the Dutch. He went to the Dutch Reformed Church in New York, mm -hmm. and he talks about getting a, you know, a star or something for attendance to the religious, you know, classes. <laughs> but, but he never. He to me he was the he had a straight line to heaven. He was the nicest person, caring, gentle. Never talked about people. Never went to church. He would drive my mother to get her to church, whatever church she was going to. And he'd sit out and read the paper, but so huh. he didn't. He didn't practice his religion, at, at, and and but growing up, like if if they were at when I was in college, there was a father daughter communion breakfast, and, and mass. He came okay. and sat with me, and of course he didn't at the time. He didn't receive communion, um, but but he he would do it for those special special occasions. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, you know. So your mom would take you and my, Jack yes, to church yes, every week, right? And and then and we went to uh, the Catholic school um, through eighth grade, and then I thought, well, I'll go to the public school. I went to Rumson High School for two years, and I learned more about my religion then because I was answering questions from people. From people who wanted to know. But I still I felt I don't know funny because I'd always been in Catholic school, so I transferred to Red Bank Catholic for the last two years, and the the priest in Rumson paid the tuition for the Catholic kids who came from Rumson. Oh, wow. So you, we hopped on a bus again, paid our nickel or whatever, and took the bus in mm -hmm. to Red Bank and had to walk a couple of blocks to the school. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Well, that hit that hit that one, too. Um, I was going to ask about pets. Did you and your brother okay. have any pets I, when you were growing you know, up? Because I know we did when... Yes, when, when you, when you guys were coming My sister's a brother through. and I, we had pets. I don't remember any when we lived when I was younger, and then when we were at, um, lived in Rumson, there was a big house down the road and the cat was having kittens. And my brother came home, he would have been maybe in fifth grade, very shy, my brother was. And uh, he said, Mom, the, the, I forget their name, the family, they're having kittens, can I have a kitten, can I have a kitten? My mother said, I never, dreamed he'd have the guts to go up there and ask for a kitten but he she she says I turn around and he's and he's got he's, it he's gone up and gotten the kitten and that was Winky it was a tiger okay. and that cat lived to be 19 years old yeah but the uh, but that's the only cat that I remember and it would you know it would go out on the pier in Rumson and you we would fish off the pier and sometimes you'd catch eels and the cat and the, the cat one day, fortunately my father was home, he grabbed the eel, but the hook was the eel was still on the hook. And the hook got caught in the cat's lip. And you know there's a barb on a hook. Yeah, yeah, if you And it, so it my father, he was so <laughs> I don't remember how he did but he had some kind of clippers, pliers Probably. that he cut the barb oh, and wow. was able to remove the Without the cat, without the cat the killing, he might have wrapped it in a towel. Yeah. And the other thing that I remember living there, they built a what's called a bulkhead so that the waves wouldn't erode your your property. Mm -hmm. And so he, my dad and the man next door, Ike Johnson, built bulkheads across their front. So it would have been a hundred or more feet. And they used um, electrical pile drivers and things like hmm. that. And one day I was there, and I forget exactly where it was plugged in at the house. My father fell in the water holding the <gasps> holding the drill, and so, and 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 they said I pulled the plug out of the oh wow and, and basically you know now that could be a um, some kind of a family myth I don't know but yeah, that's the but way I 
I felt probably like saved Jay him. Saved his life, and he built he built rowboats and he built we he bought a sailboat. We had a nice uh, Triton sailboat that we would sail in the evening. So you learned you learned how to he taught us sail, how to sail from your dad. Very cause... patient. Now you remind me, I haven't spent much time with you in, in recent years, but the way you explain things nicely and mm -hmm. calmly, you remind me of my father. Oh yeah. Now I'm gonna cry. <laughs> just just you know, so. Um, he was he was really special, and he taught us. He taught my brother and me both how to sail, and we would <clears throat> try to go under uh, the bridge. The mast would be too high, and you'd have to blow this horn, and so they would and tack around and wait until the bridge opened, and then you had to sail through. Oh wow! Through the thing, and then if you went out to sail at night, you had to hold a flashlight on the sail because you, there was no electricity on it, the sailboat. So they could so see that any you. speedboats or anything coming by would see that you were yeah. there. So. So we oh, had wow. a good, good, good time. And that well, that kind of feeds into the. I was going to ask about what kind of hobbies you had, what kind of things you did to, for fun when you were growing up. Well, I so read. It sounds like I like to read, and and as I said, we did this. We sailed and we fished, and we, you could walk to the ocean from there, um, but it was a long, it was a long walk. So we, um, we belonged to what was called a beach club. You'd drive over, and there was a parking lot, and there was a place you rented. We rented it with Ann Ev Johnston, my dad's first cousin. We rented a locker where you could keep your bathing suits, and you could go in. You could change. And, and like they had shower, they keep chairs, yeah, yes, things, and yes. umbrellas, things right. like that. And uh, and it's still in existence today. I forget what the name of it is now, but I know at some point in time after we left, Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen was a member of the Beach Club. Okay. Um, but uh, so that's where you went. You spent but it the was whole in day. Highlands. No, it was in Seabright. It was in Seabright, it was in Seabright. Okay. Seabright over the Seabright Bridge. And then during all those years, there were the there was Fort Hancock out on Sandy Hook, a spit of land, beautiful. That they used to have like uh, missiles underground mm -hmm. and all kinds of military stuff. And then the military started pulling out, and the federal government it's it's Gateway National Seashore. Mm -hmm. So after going to the private place for so long and and uh, paying for the locker and all that um, later on we could go out to the National Seashore for a nominal fee but you couldn't there was no place to change I mean you're full of sand and, but that's what we did yeah and, to just go and, home and, and it just it's so beautiful I remember um, going there when yeah. we were growing up yeah they would take us out there yeah and that now I understand um, there's a new one of the sections is a, new a nudist beach, beach. yes so, which I've had the conversation with the gal but, at the Bank Bank of America down here. Her husband <laughs> was up there on the new beach. Oh, I found Sandy Oh, yeah, Hook. yeah, because she's... I live in a small world. Yeah, she sure is. <laughs> <laughs> but you've not been, Ma, because no, you're, the, was you're the type left. that would have tried. Yes, I would have, but it was after we left. Um, you know, after I had married and we moved to South Carolina, so... I, I didn't never get a chance to go, but yeah. Paul Himmelsbach would go, but Jane never went with <laughs> So tell me about any friends you had growing up. Um, do you have any really um, best friends, and do you keep in touch with any of them? When I lived in Highlands, there were four of us that they used to call us the clam diggers. Because that Highlands, that's what a lot of the people, the occupation was, they went out and dug clams. And so mm -hmm. Um, but we, none of them were, none of the, the girls and I were clam diggers as such, but that's, but we, we palled together in grade school. Um, once we got to high school, you know, even though we went to the same high school, we, we, you know, drifted apart. Yeah. And, and I was never, had a really close, 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 but you know, some of the girls that lived in Rumson, Mary Ellen Howell, and I remember going with her. And her family, they drove down. She was looking at a college in, in Washington, D.C. So I went with them, mm -hmm. you know, and stayed overnight with them and that. But uh, but again, we, we drifted apart. As then, and I didn't date very much. And she got dating somebody else. So, you know, it, it wasn't uh, as close as it was. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that's... I was almost, always kind of a, a lone, loner. I, so you didn't date a lot. So no. do you remember your first yeah, they, date well, or your the, first you, kiss or anything like that? We used to have big parties. We used to have, one of the gals had this huge house on Rumson Road when we lived in Rumson. And she would have parties. And, you know, you did all that kissing in the closet, the, the spindle <laughs> box. But I think, I think really, my when I went as a freshman to Rumson High, 
um, the guy next door, Bobby Johnson. He was like a senior or, yeah. Um, and he, he asked me out and we did, we went, I, I think I had to be home at 10.30. <laughs> and, and he was, I guess you would say my first legitimate kiss. And, and he had a rough life after he left me. <laughs> but yeah, we were dry, he, would, he had a, a Ford, was, I forget what color, but he would pick me up and, and we would drive down to Asbury Park oh, to okay. the movies. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we would park on a side street and make out, but then the cops would catch <laughs> so, <laughs> and And then he started dating somebody else. And, and the interesting thing is he worked in a hardware store in Seabright for a few oh. years. And then she left him to, I mean, you know, it just, and years and years later when I was up here and um, my friend Holly Clifton from Water, which she, her husband was into boating with this um, hydroplane stuff. Well, she met Bobby Johnson right up here in Hampton Roads, Hampton, at some, one of those. Years later. Because they used to, they had these Jersey speed skates <coughs> Hmm. that they would um, run on the river right in front of our house um, real fast and uh, and that part, you know interested the young young men at that point so yeah so did you ever do any traveling outside the United States before you went off to college or uh, before you got married not before what it wasn't until I was in college I was a freshman in college and my cousin Irene was a sophomore there um, they were putting together a trip to Bermuda over spring break. And my, I said to my mother and father, can I go? You know, and they said, yeah. I mean, they gave me the money. And it wasn't, it, in those days even, it didn't seem like a lot. Didn't seem like a lot. So, um, and we would have flown out of New York. And I remember staying overnight at Sweeney, Marianne Boyle's house in New York City. They lived on First Avenue. Um, so we went to, and Irene went too. Um, so Irene went to Lady Cliff. Yes, that was how I didn't I, realize that. Yes, yeah, I mean, she she I went, but I, she left it when I was a freshman and she was a sophomore. By that time, she had met a cadet from West Point. Okay. And she married. It was Mark Skursky, okay. okay. Stefan Skursky, and so she left and got married. Okay. So then she was gone. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I lasted for the whole four years. <laughs> so you went to Bermuda. And yes. it was a, just a group of girls. Yes, yes. And what you did? Did you have a chaperone? Was there no, a chaperone or anything? No, but or you I just think saw my mother just said, "Drink sherry, my dear. A lady only drinks sherry." <laughs> <laughs> and we stayed at the Princess Hotel in Bermuda, and they had cabins, uh, which is where we were in the cabins, and and it was nice. And and the, and you would what we would do would be we'd go to breakfast and stuff ourselves with because that was part of the. Part of the thing. fee, and yeah. And we put all the crackers in our purses and everything. And then we, we could probably last the whole day with that. And then we we might have come back at night for a dip for the meal. So you were free. We were, it was in Hamilton, Bermuda that we were, but we went, visited all kinds of mm -hmm. places. How there, did you get around? Did you um, ride we, bikes? There were, or? There were like taxis and stuff. Now, there were those bikes, but I didn't. I was I was too chicken to, mm. that I forget what they call them Vespas or something. Yeah. But you get coral in your knees and it, and it's not too much yeah. fun. But it was beautiful and I went out. None of them else were re interested, but I went out on a sailboat ride, and the guy was quite happy with me because I knew how to sail. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, that he was. He can have fun. you help out. Yeah. So did you have any jobs? Oh, God. when you were growing up, but yes. like as a teenager, what kind yes. of things I, where um, you got a little money? Yes, um, when we lived in Rumson, I cut lawns. We had an electric mower, and there were two people. A lot of them were like just weekend war people that came or summer. So I would care for their lawns. They um, cut the lawns, and then um, my friend Holly's father they belonged to the Monmouth Beach Club which was a big fancy place which had a, a grill and a lot of the members would come after church on Sunday and have lunch at the at the grill Mrs. McCaffrey was the owners and she and her husband they worked like dogs all summer for this and then they'd go to Florida in the winter and play golf oh. but they she, he got me a job there I was a waitress 
Okay. And uh, and that was great because you could make your own milkshakes and stuff, you know. And <laughs> I really like that. Of course, the, some of the clients were snippy, but yeah, that's part of life. So yeah. So yeah. I did that, and then the coach, the football coach at Red Bank Catholic, asked me if I'd like the job as a um, camp counselor. And so one of his friends, um, George Oscoby, I think he was a football player. He was opening a camp, a day camp, in Seabright. And so the jo our jobs were to drive a little vans and pick these kids up at their house, bring them back to the camp, and then we did activities and exercises, and the, the owner's wife did ceramics with them, and, and we would take them, They it was on the oceanfront too, so we would, ah. we would have to take them over. And you counted heads to make sure nobody was under the under the waves. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was... So, but it was nice, and we, we took them um, once or twice over, there were islands in the river, and we spent the night on the island, oh. once, and, and you get full of dew, you get damp. Yeah. Um, and they had a great big catamaran that they would take out once in a while with the kids. Mm -hmm. So th that was fun, and I did that until I went off to college. And, yeah, that's and, neat. And maybe in college, well, you know, summers. So what kind of sports? Did you do? Oh, I basketball. I, I basketball, and when I was at Rumson High, I played field hockey, which I liked. Mm -hmm. um, and they also did some kind of gymnastics show. Um, the, the stage, there was a an auditorium with the stage, but the stage floor was the gym. So you had your gym classes up on the stage. Oh. It was very strange. Um, but yeah, I liked. Uh, it was mostly the field hockey and the. And it was always, um, what do they call it, um, intramural. I mean, it wasn't, I was not on a competitive team. You didn't, um, um, so did you play, like, against teams in the same uh, town? In, in some, or? like, they used to have teams called Catholic Youth Organization. Mm -hmm. I remember so playing on a, you know, Catholic school. So school talk teams, about, I'm playing, ba you play basketball yeah. at Rumson? Yes. And Red Bank and, Catholic? Uh, mostly Red Bank Catholic. And and you um, and girls basketball was different. Very different from, from it is now. Yes, and what um, it is now. There were guards and forwards, and there was a center line down the court, and the guards could not cross the line, and go toward the basket where you could make the guards never shot. In mm -hmm. other words, you defended when the the enemy came at you. You defended the basket to keep them from, but you know you so you were only it's half court, mm -hmm. half court. And we played, uh, when I was in college, we played, um, I, you, there weren't two, but we played the wax at West Point, mm -hmm. and, and I can't remember, you know. What does wax stand uh, for? Women's Air Corps, okay. I believe. And I don't remember whether they killed us or what. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about going off to Lady Cliff College. How did you choose well, that um, college? Well, and the main thing was I knew Irene was there, and uh, and then you they the counselors had you put in for um, scholarships. Scholarship money. Mm -hmm. And um, so I applied for a scholarship there, and and to New Rochelle. These were Catholic colleges. It it, it never crossed my mind in those days to go to a a, a public sc mm -hmm. school. And th there was Georgian Court, which was in New Jersey, Lakewood, New Jersey, mm -hmm. which is where that dirigible, uh, remember the dirigible that went up in flames? Yes. That's I where it burned. That. Okay. But there was a, a, a Catholic college down there run by the Sisters of Mercy, too. And I had been there because I the nuns didn't ever drive at, in those days. So one of the nuns, my friend, she, had, she was taking a course down up there, so I would drive her down on Saturday. Oh. And hang out while she was in class, and just you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I applied different scholarships, and Lady Cliff offered me the most money. Mm -hmm. It was a full tuition. I still oh, had wow. to pay room and board, room and board but, full, but tuition. full tuition. And my parents didn't have a lot. You know, I never mm -hmm. realized it, but they didn't have a lot, so mm -hmm. I took it. And and uh, so that's and where. What I was your major? Up. What did and you? And I majored in math. 
and I think biology was my minor, but going to a Catholic school, you had to also take um, all kinds of um, religion, like mm -hmm. cosmo cosmology and philosophy, and I forget what the, you mm -hmm. know, what it was. Um, so, you know, you, you were, I was carrying 21 credits, but it wasn't too hard. And I did clip, or whatever, you know, college level, you, you, the Spanish. I had, mm -hmm. had a, such a good Spanish teacher in high school mm -hmm. that, that I took the test and I didn't have to take the um, actual the actual class. No, I you did get, take, you got credit for it. Yeah, I did take one year and it was the time when they were, when uh, Castro was taking over and the teacher that taught us at Lady Cliff, Dr. Delamora, she was from uh, Cuba. Oh, wow. And she, but she had left because mm -hmm. she was of the different mm -hmm. class. And um, and she, so she would talk a little, you know, a bit about it. And she married the postman up there, but that, I, that's beside <laughs> the point. And she had unusual thumbs that I, you know, and she wore all this jewelry, you know, so you just look and sit. And it was in her class that I went, dad took us skiing at uh, Silver Mines at Bear Mountain. And that's when I fell and broke my coccyx over uh, winter break or mm -hmm. something. And I remember sitting in her class in one of those donuts, you know. Oh. Bad pain, bad pain. So tell me about meeting Dad. You oh, were at, you yes. were off at college yes. when you met. And there was a room called the Smoker, where you could smoke and play cards, and there was a TV set in there. And they um, all the freshmen, which means there were like thirty five of us in the class, had to be in the Glee Club. It was, I mean, it wasn't it was required. Except for my roommate, Ailey Murphy, who was, she, I don't know whether she pretended or she was tone deaf. She was the only one who got out of being, <laughs> <laughs> I kill her to this day. But anyway, so, and they would invite, and they do joint concerts with a lot of the Catholic men's colleges. So one time it was, it was um, Manhattan College, and Daddy was still there. He was still going there. And our director was also the director at West Point for the men's choir or something. So so the, the men would come up from Manhattan and we'd do practices and then do a, a concert. And I don't know whether they, they, they wouldn't have stayed overnight. But anyway, at one point in the festivities, we, would, we were in the smoker mm -hmm. talking to, to the men. And Daddy's friend, Dick Bebon, who was already engaged to somebody, <laughs> He had his eye on my friend Cindy McLean. So he says to John, get yourself, get, you know, let's let's get out of here. And and so she he says something to Cindy and she grabs me. <laughs> and you know, so we went like we went, well, first of all, we must have been dancing. And and then they kidded me afterwards. I mean, Daddy kidded me afterwards, because his mother had had a mastectomy. And I thought, oh, this guy dances real close, but he was probably because I had, <laughs> I don't know, but I had bigger boobs than his mother had, obviously, by that time. So, and and we went um, <clears throat> to a place called the Teepee. We, we we did something wrong. We left campus without permission. Oh. And and uh, and so you know, um, and we came back, but we got in trouble. But that's mm -hmm. that was our first meeting. And what mm -hmm. always pissed me off was that here was Dick Bebon hustling. One of my classmates, when he well, was he's engaged, engaged to, to do this engaged. gal. Did and he go on to marry the one he, he was engaged her. to? Yes. Cindy's, um, or her name, I forget what her name was, but her dad, Big Bucks, owned a big shirt factory. And Richard Bebon went to work for him. And I believe he's, if he's not, maybe he's retired now, but he worked for them. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I may have mistaken. So he did... Break off with the other girl. No, he oh, the married the other girl that, that it was because she was to. yes, and and we had been Daddy and I had been invited up to her house on the um, it was somewhere on the Hudson River. It was a big house, and the the mother had they used to have these exercise these straps that were you put them around your rear end and hips and they vibrated. Oh yeah, it was yeah. on a yeah. machine. Yes, yeah, yes. So, that, that, machine. so her mom had one of those, so we were all trying that. <laughs> So tell me about when you got engaged to dad. Was there like a formal um, proposal? Did he propose no, to no, you? No, no, no. Well, did that all we, work out? Um, see, he lived out on Long Island, old? and he was a day, he drove into Manhattan all the time, uh -huh. and I was a, 
a door, I was a, I stayed on campus at Ladycliff, which was about 90 miles north of New York City. So we, there weren't too many times that we, he would come up sometimes, but, and the, but so once or twice he came down um, to, he saw the house on Waterman Avenue and he helped us move. And then, um, but, and then I would go to his, his parents lived on the last street in Queens County, New York, mm -hmm. which is still, it's out on Long Island, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and they, again, two bedroom, one bath, tiny kitchen and a living room, second floor. Um, so I would stay overnight. So he would sleep out on the couch and I would be in his, what was his bedroom, which he had all wired. He used to be a, he could have been an electrical engineer if he had really, um, but anyway, I mean, we had been talking about it, I guess, and, and we had talked about, his mother had a very lovely um, silver dinner ring with filigree mm -hmm. and three little I diamonds. I remember it, yeah. And I thought, well, that'd be nice. And I, I said I would take that. And, um, but then as all my other friends were getting these solitaires. <laughs> but anyway, we were in the bedroom and, and he knelt down and I can't remember whether it wasn't any, it wasn't like some poem or anything like that you know like they do now with the asking a girl for the prom here he's asking me to marry him for 57 years and he's in his bedroom I'm sitting on the bed and <laughs> so and that desk at Mary's was in, in, in that was his desk okay. in his bedroom so you know that's so he, he I don't even remember the words it wasn't the, so you were still had he finished college or was he, he still in college when you got engaged By the time when once he left college, they snatched him up and drafted him. And drafted him. Okay. So, he so was, it probably was before that then. Yeah. So he finished in fifty nine, I think he mm -hmm. it may have been I was this, maybe in fifty nine or sixty I was a I was still a junior in college. You know. So it's somewhere along there. So tell me you had a, a story about getting your engagement ring or something, I think. I think that was about it. where uh Oh, oh you know, where so you went I, to Oh yeah, um, cause I, 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 everybody was getting the solitaire, so I talked to John, and he, so he agreed. And I think it, I think it was Dick Bebon's father said to go down to the Diamond District, and say, you know, Joe sent me, and, and we went down, and you know, you go up the stairs, and there are the all, all of these diamond brokers, mm -hmm. and you know, knocked on the door, and that's where we went in, and bought. So you couldn't just went, walk in; you had to. Well, I don't know that they frisked you or anything or or that, that we had to really prove that we knew but you know mm -hmm. it, sometimes that would just help that the guy would know that you were connected with somebody mm -hmm. else and give you a good deal yeah we thought yeah. it helped so wait so, so you graduated did you go did you get a job first or did you get married um, first you know, I graduated you for a little bit. in May of 61 and it, at that point, I remember going on an interview with Mr. Lefevre, the Middletown School Board Superintendent, mm -hmm. and he hired me, you know, before the summer was out, um, to teach first grade, I think mm -hmm. it was, uh, at, right down the block from where we lived, so I could walk, which was great. Um, so I took it. It was forty four hundred dollars a year. Wow! And uh, and then that July, we got married. Got July fifteenth, and then I started teaching, and I, I didn't like it. <laughs> and fortunately, um, I can't remember when. Maybe <clears throat> in the fall, late fall. Well, at, at some that fall. Um, Daddy's sister's husband was very ill, Anne Marie and Charlie Berger, mm -hmm. and they had three or four kids. And so somehow or other, we wound up taking Johnny, the oldest boy, to come and live with us because Charlie was going through all this mm -hmm. diabetes stuff. So he went to school in the school that I oh, worked at, okay. and he would walk home with us. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, things got better at their house, so he, he, he may have been there with us for three months. It was, mm -hmm. But he's never forgotten that, and that's, oh. he still s will send us little, little memories. Um, 
But then I started, I thought I had cancer. Uh, I thought, I feel sick and ooh, and I'd come home and we had a cat and we would lock the cat in, in this big bathroom, which would probably had been a maid's bedroom uh -huh. um, in this house. And so I'd come home and open that door and the cat would have been pooping on the, in the cat box and I'm Ugh. So um, I went to the, the gynecologist and I was pregnant. And by February, I was five months pregnant and you can't teach and show you that you're pregnant. Ah. Oh. So they let me. Even, and this was in a public, public school. school system. Yeah. But I was never so were, glad to get out of there. So, <laughs> so that so that wasn't your choice to stop working. No, I could. I may have. Although I would you have were had to get okay. a lawyer, I guess, to fight it. I don't know. You Isn't know. That interesting. You know. You just wow. take things. You, we in those days, you just did what you yeah. were told. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I didn't want to stay to begin with, so I was delighted that by February <laughs> I was out of the hole, and I never did go back to teaching. I, so where were you living at this time when you were? It was in Navis, in New cut. Jersey. Was it an apartment? It was a two. Or? It was a, it was a. Three-story house, downstairs a young couple rented. We rented from the second floor, and we got the third floor, which was the attic, as a bonus. And the owner of the house was a guy who lived on my mother's street, about, okay. about an hour, a mile away. Um, oh, I can't think of their name. She was an artist, and her their son became a priest. But anyway, we rented. And I think we paid $85 a month because I cut the lawn and kept, ah. kept the weeds away, which I like. And so Matt was born while Matt you were living at this place? Matt was born while we were living there. And, um, and you had him in a hospital, I In guess. the hospital. What and hospital? It was the Riverview Hospital. And we, um, I think my water broke. And Daddy hadn't been feeling well. And he had gone to the doctor and they had taken blood work. And so he took me to the hospital and I was in labor for, oh, I don't know, long time, um, like 19 hours. And they had um, they then decided they would do a cesarean. Um, but in the meantime, he had gone back home and got a message from the doctor, get in bed, you have mononucleosis. Oh my gosh. So he never came. Had the cesarean, was in there 10 days in the hospital. Oh in a gosh. four, there were four women in the same room. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember whether we had insurance or not. But, um, th so, you know, that's what you did. And, and, uh, did you, did you guys already have names picked out for? Uh, yeah, we wanted you... Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> So you got Matthew. But we got Matthew. That was as far as we got with the... So the, were all the kids then were born at Riverview? Yes. Yes. Now, when did you... When did you move to the house on Brook Street? Um, and was there anything in between? No, there that was That apartment? No, no. It was So straight, you bought that... You bought, bought that, that house on Brook Street? Yes, and I can't remember when we would have... I'd have to really go back and look when we bought it. Um, uh... And I do have pictures of Matt in when we were still on the in the apartment, mm -hmm. and Aunt Florence came and then and I, I was breastfeeding, but we also had to, she wanted us to supplement it, you know, and then you had to put the bottle in the warm water to keep the bottle. Just she was mm -hmm. a nurse, um, and you know now by the time I got to you and and the others, I was shoving the, <laughs> <laughs> the bottle in your mouth out of the fridge. <laughs> So yes, you were all born at Riverview, and um, the I think that there was a park below that, and and they kept you in there forever. It and I like remember my father taking, like bringing you and Matt maybe to the, at the end of the hall. I could look down and see you, and you would mm -hmm. wave wave to me. And um, so, but yeah, and I, and I guess he and my mother took care of you, and my because Daddy would have gone to work. I, don't know. Didn't care. I was getting food. And <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, they would have. Were they retired by then? Oh yeah. So because I just when I was yes. growing up, I remember they were already retired. Yes. When I was old enough to she, know, but my mother, because she never had a degree, only that two, two years. Mm -hmm. nor, so she was always taking. You know, she teach school and then she go and take college take courses, courses to keep being certified. She retired the same year she got her bachelor's degree. Oh, wow. 
and he pulled her through all of the math. He mm -hmm. he taught her how to do. The, she'd come home with this stuff like statistics and all that. And, and he, he, he would sit there patiently with her and, yeah. and help her through it. Wow. So, um, well, yeah. you got that from Grandpa because you were the one I went to when I had yeah, math yeah. problems with math. Cause yeah, I hated yeah, because I like math. I love, I like math. Yeah, but um, I I never was able to do anything with it. My my product was you children. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little something about each of us. Oh, what time is it? Is it time to go. <laughs> Stop here if you want. No, I don't. It's two o'clock. It's it's, it's two o'clock yeah, already. It's almost two. I feel like you we hit can, me in the uh, head with a baseball bat. <laughs> we can stop. My here brain has swelled. Well, I want you to get through all your. That was um, my last question. Okay. How well, did you, you know so, most of the most of the memories you have are from the pictures that you took? Mm -hmm. I think, at least for me, it is. Um, you know, we had it in those days. Your father worked for what was Bayer, mm -hmm. and they were part of Agfa, so we could get free f slide film. We took a lot, when mm -hmm. he had a nice Nik Nikon, it was mm -hmm. not digital. Um, so we took a lot of pictures, so, um, and, you know, I, so. So how did you come up with your your plan to have the, uh, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, Matthew, John, and I. That had, fell through when yes, I came along, and, so how did you I pick my name, Mandy Ann? Well, I th Anne was for Anne Marie, mm -hmm. his daddy's sister, and the Mandy. I liked Amanda, but then I got to thinking, well, my name is Peggy, and and you're st always saying, no, it's Peggy, it's not Margaret, and, and I knew if I called you Amanda, I'd be correcting people, or and so I just I said, oh, let's call her Mandy, and then because I did, and it was there, and then I got to thinking. You know, on a fifty-year-old woman, what's Mandy? I mean, <laughs> but you got it. You know, and, that's right. And it's it's complicated to change your name, which I discovered. Yes. Um, so well, I wouldn't know the answer to anything else either. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it was just there. You were this cute little thing with the red curly red hair, mm -hmm. and uh, yelled all the time. Mm -hmm. Now Matt was a more placid um, kid. Um, but he had the same. He he got he the had, red hair from. Dad's Daddy, side, yeah, kind of yeah, I, I guess so. But, but yours was much more. Although vibrant. it could have been from yours because Uncle Jack has red hair. Yes, that's so true. That's true. Somehow. I never thought about that. Yeah. But anyway. Um, and then the, now the twins came along. Did you know they were twins before? No, um, I had a miscarriage before that, um, and uh, my father. I called him. Anything because Daddy was all up in Union, in New Jersey, an hour mm -hmm. away, and um, I remember the. The fetus, or I, you couldn't tell what it was, but it came out in the toilet, yeah. and uh, and then I had to go to, for DNC, and I was they must have given me something, and I was yelling in the doctor, who's in there yelling at me, you know? <laughs> and then I had to say that they said, well, what did you have for breakfast, you know, pregnant woman? Orange juice and Fritos. <laughs> I had to admit to that, but that so that was the miscarriage, <laughs> and and you know in those days, and I had then thinking back, I think I had German measles. Oh. Shortly before that, and so that you know, been, I, it was wow. never definitive, you know. Yeah. But I always felt I um, was glad that it mm -hmm. miscarried, and and we always wanted. Daddy was from a family of two children, a boy and a girl, and they fought like hell. Mm -hmm. I was from a family of two, and I, my, you know, you fade away the the fighting, but it was a, a five year difference with both of us. We came mm -hmm. from, um, so we had decided we wanted three, mm -hmm. and. Um, so I got, we got pregnant and, um, they, they thought I was big, but they, uh, they didn't, you know, they don't, they didn't do, they had no ultrasound. There was no ultrasound and they and wouldn't they have done did, anything else no. unless they thought something was really wrong. Right. With everything was fine. And of course, by that time, because I had had the first cesarean, when I had you, I, I was able to pick the day and you go in before you started to labor and the mm -hmm. same with, with them. And when I went in, you go in and they, they prepping you and they're listening and they didn't ever hear more than one heartbeat with them. Mm -hmm. And so we went and you go down to the operating room with one isolate and a set of, you know, pink and blue beads and mm -hmm. all this. And of course, I think I was awake for you. I remember the yeah. blood going past me. 
Um, but the, when they said, I said, I want to be knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the nurses, some of the nurses came up after the, the delivery and they said, it was cash. They said, the doctor opened you up, pulled the one baby out, and then turned and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's another there's baby another in one. here. And I don't know who it was, but they had to put them both kind of catty corner in the one isolate <laughs> to get them to the, the mm -hmm. whatever the pick whatever, room. yeah. And they were held. They were nine, seven, and six, no, seven, three, and six, ten. Which is huge for yes. twins. And I forget you were in around a nice normal size, and that was a biggie. Yeah, he was a nine something. Yeah. But um, but I was fortunate. They were you know, and you were all pretty healthy. You had. You yelled quite a bit and puked. I used to run around in my underwear when you were a baby and I was trying to feed you, but you had that pyloric stenosis. Mm -hmm. and, and then I had a herniated yeah, yes, ovary or something. Yes, and, and what we, they had, we had to do was, it was popping out, um, it, you know, the ovary was popping out of the, the muscle wall of this mm -hmm. down there. So they put your feet higher than your, than your belly mm -hmm. and your head so that the ovary would go back in but then they had to operate on that too yeah um, doctor I think it was dr. Kalarsik that operated on you and the baby before you had had to swat, had kept eating hair and they so they had removed you know how you talk oh, to yeah. yeah eating hair muscle big wad of hair that's a I think that's a some particular kind of, um, you like syndrome or something, or something. Yeah, yeah. That some yeah. people have so that's you know you were back in the hospital when you were you know just it was you were yeah. in there very long and you obviously survived. Oh so. yes. So, but yeah. you did yell, and I would. I was just taught, I, you know, we would make sure you were fed, that you were dry, that and there in those days wrong. you used cloth diapers and safety pins. Mm -hmm. You check, make sure it was sticking there with the safety pin, mm -hmm. and then you know, and, and we had that porch on Brook Street that you know, we, we, we sometimes you would fall asleep out there. So, but yeah, the, but whether what it was, I don't know. You know, so you brought the twins home, and you probably you they slept in a banana box. Yes, they came home in a banana box too. Yeah, the Chiquita banana. One was on the top one, and one was yeah. in the bottom part. And but you we, tried nicknames for them. Yeah, Meg and Peg. Um, Peg was P for pink. We put nail polish on one of them, pink nail polish, so we wouldn't mix them up. But. But that didn't stick. No, no. And, and Margaret never got a nickname either. I mean, no, which is interesting. No, it was always Margaret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mary. And Mary's was, already kind of a name. It's yes. Yeah. Now Mary enough, was named. She's Mary Elizabeth. She's Mary Elizabeth, and I think she might have been named first. Oh, because that's Sissy. That's my cousin Sissy's name. Mm -hmm. And Sissy was a good cousin to me. She still mm -hmm. is. Um, so I think. That name now, where Margaret Ann came from, it may have came from my, you know, like Aunt Peg or or mm -hmm. Ann for um, mm -hmm. Anne Marie, but then yours was definitely from Anne Marie because your hair was very similar to Anne Marie's too. So and so and Matthew's middle name is John, so that's yes, Daddy's. Matthew John Gibson. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is probably a good place to good stop. Well, I guess we ought to say that it was Red Bank, New Jersey, where we were born. Yes. We, we, uh, our address was Red Bank, but was yes, it physically but you actually, Middletown? Politically, in G you were in Middletown, New Jersey, so you voted in the mm -hmm. Middletown elections, and you went to the Middletown schools, except Matt, who went, he he went, went to for two grades Saint to St. James. For the a little while. That's where we went to the Catholic Church, and okay. that's where he went to school for two years. But... We decided he can get just as good an education at the public school, and they mm -hmm. had more opportunities for art or other things, and music so, and stuff like that. And you survived. You yep. all survived. So and we lived there until seventy or the end of seventy-six. Seventy-six. And Christmas, moved just down before to Christmas. Rock Hill, South Carolina. Yeah, Daddy was transferred. He moved us in the middle company. of a school year, which yes. probably was a smart but thing to because do because you, because then it you gets were forced you, into meeting people yes. as soon as school started in the, in January. It wasn't a conscious decision. No. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember. They may have needed Maybe did there. you, maybe, do you, th so it could have either been when they needed him or maybe you decided a 
the, the end of a calendar year was the yeah the best one. because that would have affected taxes and stuff yeah. too. Right. Maybe you were thinking about that. Who right. knows? I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? So. So. All um, right. Well, we'll stop for today. That we got through all well, of my stuff, Ma. Yeah. So we'll just have to come up with more because I have lots of other ideas to oh, talk geez. about too. So. <laughs> but we don't have to do any more today. Okay. All right. Okay. This has been nice.